think about whether or not a reaction is thermodynamically favorable. That is, it has a negative delta G. You release energy when you do this reaction, your products are going to be happier than your reactants, and that's reflected, all reflected in your delta G. If you have a negative delta G, great, you're thermodynamically favorable, you're quote unquote spontaneous, although that doesn't mean likely, there could be a big activation barrier and stuff, but your products are happier than reactants, it's thermodynamically favorable. If you say have an enzyme and tell the enzyme to go, you'll get boom, all of a sudden all of your reactants will be products. Okay, well not all of a sudden. But now imagine that, well, if all you have is products, the only way you can go is to make more reactants, right? So obviously the concentration is gonna matter when we think about, well, is the reaction actually gonna happen in the forward direction? Whether or not the, in, this is going to depend on the inherent favorability, kind of like the, is, are the chemical biophysical reasons why the products are more stable than the reactants? We could be talking about things like Maybe there's less charge repulsion. Maybe we have hydration. Maybe we have resonance. Maybe we have ionization. All of these various reasons why the products might be stabilized over the reactants. This is the case with ATP. Yes, to actually break that bond between the, eight, the last phosphate and the other part of it, breaking any bond is always endothermic in the breaking of it. You have to put in energy to break something. But then you have to think about what you get with your products. You get ionization, you get resonance, you get hydration, you get the relief of the charge repulsion of those negatively charged phosphate groups that were held close together. All of that is going to contribute to giving it a negative, a large negative delta G, not the inherent. And then you have the conditional. So say that we had, we say it's really, really favorable to hydrolyze ATP. So favorable that if we just like let it go, and it wasn't going to have a big activation barrier, we would end up all with ADP. But then the only way we could go was to reverse things. So the products are going to matter. The co product's concentration is going to matter. Not just the concentration, though, it's really the ratio of products and reactants, and we call this Q. We can then take that, as well as like the temperature, that's always also going to impact things. You can think about if your reaction lets off heat, it's kind of like heat is going to be a byproduct of the reactant. And so Le Chatelier stuff, that's going to push things the other way as well. So we have to consider both the temperature as well as the Q. So the, constant, the ratio of products to reactants. The, that is going to matter. The temperature is going to matter a bit, but typically we're not like fluctuating too wildly with that. That concentration really though, can, that can vary a lot. Whether or not, though, that is enough to actually reverse the reaction, well, that's going to depend on the, the delta G naught. If you have a really, really big delta G naught, this is saying that it's either way, way, way more favorable in one direction. If your delta G naught is, going, is negative, that means that you're going to have a lot more products. It's a lot more favorable in the forward direction as written. If you have a positive delta G naught, that's saying you're gonna take a lot of energy in order to do something. But wait, I didn't mean to just skip, tip the scale because, well, the only way to tip the scale without adding energy directly is to change the concentrations of the products and the reactants or to do that whole like change the temperature thing. That's where the concentrations come in. They're super duper important. But when are they most important? They're most important when your reaction has a small delta G naught. If we had a really big delta G naught, we would really have to skew those concentrations in order to tip the scale back. We would need a ton, a ton, a ton of ADP in order to make it so that it was favorable to actually go and reverse things, take that inorganic phosphate, put it onto ADP to make ADP, directly reversing hydrolysis of ADP. There are other ways that we can make ADP, but we typically don't just like reverse the way that we burn ATP. In fact, because we have such a, we keep the ratio so out of balance that we have way, way, way more ATP than ADP in our cells. This makes it even more favorable to burn ATP, to hydrolyze ATP. So we're taking something that's already favorable and we're making it even more favorable. 
How can we reverse things though? Well, if we reverse thing, want to reverse things, we would need more of our um, product. We would need a lot of the ADP in our inorganic phosphate. Turns out that that negative delta G is uh, not is so big that this isn't really realistic. But now imagine that we had a more neutral delta G naught, something that was closer to zero. In this case, a little bit of changes in the concentration can make a really big difference. So these are the sort of reactions that we can easily reverse. And a lot of the reactions we'll see in our biochemical pathways are of this sort. There are these reactions where we have a pretty small delta G um, knot, and so we can go one way or the other by controlling the concentrations. And we have ways to control the concentrations. And so we can have these intermediates be controlled by their concentrations and then having the concentra like the concentrations of the intermediates be going all these different pathways and then depending on how much of one thing you have versus another, you'll go one way versus the other way. And this way we're able to kind of like reuse these enzymes in various ways and not have to reinvent the wheel over and over and over again. But when it comes to wanting a big power boost, well here, there you really do want that big negative delta G that's going to drive the reaction forward past that step. You can couple it, the, the power of the ATP hydrolysis that comes from the inherent favorability from the skewed product ratio, all of this you're able to use to make the ATP hydrolysis super duper energetically favorable. And then you could use that energetically favorable thing to drive other unenergetically non-favorable things. But for those things where you have the delta G closer to that zero, yeah, you can, change, you can change the conditions in order to make things go one way versus the other. And then by having that like one driving thing and then the other steps you can kind of be reverse, we'll see that we're able to control all of these different biochemical pathways and it's super duper awesome. Metabolism is super duper fun. Um, this initial thermodynamics is a little like, but we'll be over it soon and get into some real fun stuff.